Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. So I had released a video on the topic multicollinearity few days back, okay? And some of you had given me a feedback saying, Aman, you missed one topic in that video. That topic is known as variance inflation factor. So first of all, a big thank you to you guys. When you write such comments, it gives me confidence that, you know, you are learning what I'm trying to make you learn. You are participating in that conversation. You are making that journey at Unfold Data Science interactive. So a big thank you to all of you. What we will do in this video is we will take this topic and we will understand in very simple terms what is VIF, what is its use, where to use it and how to talk about VIF in a data science interview. Before moving on to the video guys, one more time I want to request you to kindly subscribe the channel if you have not done yet. That will help me a lot. Okay. So let's move ahead guys. Now, what is the meaning of variance inflation factor? The most important keyword here is variance. Okay. What is variance guys? You know what we try to do when we fit a regression model or any model as such, we try to capture the variance of the data. Okay. And if we are able to capture the variance of the data, then we are able to learn the pattern of the data. This is at high level. Okay. Now for understanding VIF, you need to understand two things guys. One is what is R squared? Okay. For this topic, I will just give you a high level knowledge of what is R square. This is nothing but a measurement metric or a number that tells you how good your model is fitting. So R square typically in the range of zero to one, if it's closer to 1, let's say 92 or 0 0.92, your model is said to be a good model. If it is far from 1, your model is said to be a not good model. Okay, so this gives you a how accurate your model is. I will strongly advise you to watch this video, the link for which you can see here, if you have any confusion in R square. This is a very important basic topic. It might not give a very good impression in the interview if you are not able to explain R square properly. Okay. So just ensure you know everything about R square at high level, nothing but accuracy of a model regression model. Okay. This is one thing you need to know for understanding VIF. And second thing is simple mathematics guys, simple mathematics. When I say X divided by Y. So if I write X divided by Y, I keep y constant and increase x. What happens to this whole term? You have the answer, it increases. If I keep x constant and increase y, then what happens to this whole term? It decreases, right? Very simple mathematic fundamental. Okay. Now let us understand what is variance inflation factor. So variance inflation factor is a term or is a measurement through which we can know which variables in the data are highly correlated with other variables. Let me give you a simple example. Okay. Let's say this is your data. Okay. This is your data. In your data, you capture employee data of an organization. Same example, which I give always. Okay. In one column, you take age. In other column, you take years of experience. In third column, you take gender and your target variable is salary. Okay. So salary is your target variable, your independent columns are age, experience, gender. Fine. Now I told you in multi coordinate video that you can see the correlation between independent features and remove the features which are highly correlated with other feature. So when you see correlation, right, what you will see is a correlation matrix like this, a correlation matrix in this matrix on one side will be X1, X2, X3. And here also you will have x1, x2, x3. Fine. Here you will have x1 correlation with x1, always 1, x1 correlation with x2, some number, let us say 0 0.9. This is how your correlation matrix will look like. What you do here, you see the higher numbers and remove the variable. But one thing to note here is it is always correlation of one variable with other. For example, x1 with x2. If I see this box, this tells me x3 with x2. But what if I want to know how is x1 related to all other variables? So in your data, let us say there are 10 variables. 
I want to know how x1 is related to all the rest of the nine variables. The answer to that is VIF. So what will happen in VIF is forget your target variable for a moment. Okay, forget your target variable. Let's say in the independent variable you have five independent variable. Okay, so let us say you have five variables x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5. So in a normal correlation I can see correlation with x1 versus x2, x1 versus x3, x3 versus x4 like that two variables at a time. But what I want to see? I want to see how x1 is related to all other variables. How can I do that? Simply fit a regression model here. So can we fit a regression model where it says x1 is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x2 plus beta 2 x3 and so on and so forth. What I am trying to do here, I am trying to fit a regression model on one independent variable and treating all other independent variable as features. I am repeating it again. Forget target variable for a moment. This is all your independent variable or features of the data. Take one feature out, make that a separate model where this feature is a target variable and all other features are independent variable. Once we fit a regression model, we will have the R square, right? We will have this number R square. That R square will be taken and plugged in into VIF formula. What is the VIF formula? 1 by 1 minus R square. Okay, this is your VIF formula. So if I ask you tomorrow, what is the VIF of variable x1? You will take R square from this regression model and put it here. Okay. Now let us assume two scenarios. One scenario where R square is very high. Let us assume that. If R square is high, then numerator will be high or low? You have to tell me. If R square is high, then numerator will be high or low? If R square is high, then more magnitude goes out from 1 and hence denominator is low. If denominator is low, then what happens to this entire term? This term will go up, right? Fine. And let us take another scenario where R square is relatively lower. For example, let's say 0.45. In that case, your denominator is high and hence your overall number will be low. Remember, numerator is always constant. Okay. If numerator is constant and you change denominator, if you increase denominator, your total value will decrease. If you decrease denominator, your total value will increase. So what will happen in that case? VIF for a, for a higher R square model, VIF value will be high. For example, if the R square value is 0 0.9, then you will see a higher VIF with respect to if your R square is 0 0.7. So similarly, you will have a VIF number for all your independent features in the data. I will have one VIF number for x1. Similarly, I will take x2 in my target, rest of the features in an independent feature, fit a model, one VIF for x2, one VIF for x3, one VIF for x4. So what we do typically is we run VIF for all the columns in the data in one shot. Okay. And we get all the VIF values and we will have an output like this where it will say us for variable x1 VIF is 6, for variable x2 VIF is 10, for variable x3 VIF is 2.1, for variable x4 VIF is 5.6 and traditionally typically the range at which we start removing the variable is 5. So any variable with VIF value greater than 5, we take that out from the analysis or model training. What is the meaning of that if VIF is high? If VIF is high, the meaning is for example, if I say in this case for x1 VIF is high, the meaning of that is x1 is being explained by other variables in a very good way. Or if you talk in terms of R square mathematically, the variance explained by x1 is captured very well by other variables. Hence, we do not need x1. Remove x1. If a variable has VIF 10, remove that even before x1. If VIF is 0 0.3, do not remove. VIF is low. So this is about VIF. 
what is bif a metric that tells you how other variables are explaining your one variable so if bif is high we remove that variable because other variables are already explaining this variable that is in crisp what is bif points where you can confuse is r square just go and watch that video which i have suggested you and then bif will be absolutely clear to you this is how you have to explain bif tomorrow if somebody asks you in an interview okay let me know what do you feel about this video in comment let me know if you have any questions i will see you all in the next video guys till then wherever you are stay safe and take care